Welcome to Leander ISD's Smart Money Explainer on School Finance. Let's start with the tax rate. As revenues come into the school district, funds are split between two sides of the tax rate, the MNO or maintenance and operations, and the INS or interest and sinking. It's important to note that the money generated on each side can only be used for specific types of expenses. The MNO side is primarily used for operating the district, employee salaries and benefits, student education resources, classroom supplies and equipment, and contracted services like utilities, insurance, legal and audit services are paid for from this source of funding. These are your day-to-day -day expenses. The INS side can only be used to pay off bonds sold for construction and capital improvements to facilities. Bonds are also issued to buy furniture, equipment, and to purchase land. These are your long-term expenses paid for over a number of years. INS funds are used to pay off these bonds and cannot be used for operational costs, such as payroll. The INS jar is filled only through local property taxes. The state does not contribute toward the payment of debt issued to build and maintain school facilities. Now, let's look at how a school district receives revenues on the MNO side. Revenues here come into three separate jars, the Tier 1 Entitlement, Tier 2 Golden Pennies, and Tier 2 Copper Pennies. Filling these jars will come from a combination of the following buckets. The State of Texas's Available School Fund, Local MO Collections, and Additional State Aid. There is one more jar, for recapture, which is used when excess funds are sent back to the state. The biggest jar of revenue for a school district is the Tier 1 Entitlement. Let's look at how the size of this jar is determined for a school district. As students attend school, this is called the Average Daily Attendance, or ADA, the size of this jar grows. But not every kid goes to school every day, so let's shrink it a little, because we do not get funding for students not in attendance. Students with certain characteristics grow the jar by an even bigger amount as they attend school. This is called the Weighted Average Daily Attendance, or WADA. These characteristics include things like special education, career and technology, bilingual and dual language, gifted and talented, early education, and students at risk of dropping out. But some of these students also do not go to school every day, so the jar shrinks a little again. Transportation is another factor that increases the size of the jar. And then the jar grows as a district opens a new school. It's important to note that this isn't money to build the school. Instead, it's startup costs for opening a new school. Another component is for fast growth districts in Texas. If, relative to other school districts, the district is considered fast growth, the jar grows a little for that too. Now that we know the size of the jar, let's look at how it's filled in a few different scenarios. In all scenarios, the first bucket to fill the Tier 1 jar is the State of Texas's Available School Fund, or ASF. A designated amount of this bucket is given to every school district in Texas. The next bucket, and the largest contributor, is the local collections from the m and tax rate. In this scenario, using Leander ISD as the example district, we're going to assume that there was 8% of property value growth from the previous year. This leaves a little room at the top of the jar. And because the Tier 1 jar is guaranteed revenue for a school district, this last bucket of state aid fills in the remainder. Instead of 8% property value growth from the previous year, in this scenario, let's say Leander ISD sees 18% growth. Like the first scenario, the first bucket to fill the Tier 1 jar is the state's ASF bucket. It pours in that same designated amount given to every school district. The next bucket, the local collections from the m and tax rate, now has a lot more to pour in because of the change in property value growth. So at 18%, this bucket fills the Tier 1 jar right to the top. But in this scenario, there is no room for additional state aid, so the district does not get anything from the third bucket. In this last scenario, let's use the amount of growth, 30%, as currently seen in Leander ISD. The local bucket again fills the Tier 1 jar to the top, but then pours its excess funds into the recapture jar, where it is then sent back to the state. 
So as you can see, even as property values grew in all three scenarios, the amount a school district receives in revenues stays the same because the size of the tier one jar is not dependent on tax collections or property value growth. The next jar of revenue in the MO tax rate is for the tier two golden pennies. A school district has eight allowable golden pennies, and these pennies are golden because they are not subject to recapture. So this jar will continue to grow as property values increase. Revenues never overflow. The golden pennies are also guaranteed to produce a certain amount based on WADA, the weighted average daily attendance. So if local MO collections do not fill the jar all of the way, the state will pitch in to make the jar full. Leander ISD currently uses five golden pennies. To access the three other golden pennies, a voter approval tax rate election, or VATRE, would be required. More on the VATRE in a minute. The last jar of revenue in the MO tax rate is for the tier two copper pennies. A school district has nine allowable copper pennies. Differing from golden pennies, these copper pennies are subject to recapture. Current estimates for Leander ISD are that for every penny, the school district would keep 60% and the other 40% would be put into the recapture jar and sent back to the state. Leander ISD currently does not have any copper pennies. To access these, a VATRE would be required. As Leander ISD looks to address its current budget deficit on the operation side, the part funded by the MNO tax rate, it looks to do so by cutting costs and increasing revenues. As shown, the size of the MNO tier one jar is fixed relative to a school district's students and characteristics. The only way to bring in more revenue per student is to increase the size of the MNO tier two jars by having more golden and copper pennies. To bring in more revenue, while still giving taxpayers much needed relief, the increase to the MNO tax rate would be offset by an even greater decrease to the INS rate. Let's take a closer look at Leander ISD's tax rate. The current rate for 2021-22 has an MNO tier one rate of 0 0.8220. There are five MNO tier two golden pennies. There are no MNO tier two copper pennies. And then there's an INS rate of 0 0.4650. Looking ahead, the MNO tier one rate will reduce in size because of something called compression. The state imposed a limit to the amount of additional revenue generated from the MNO tax rate on rising property values by requiring school districts to lower the MNO tax rate as values increase. So in Leander ISD, with skyrocketing property values, our MNO tier one rate is projected to compress down to the state's minimum of 0.8046. Through a VATRE, the district could look to access the three remaining golden pennies, bringing this to a total of eight cents. And then the district could also look to access six of the available copper pennies. Offsetting this MNO increase is a reduction of the INS rate by more than 13 pennies. So in this scenario where the board sets a tax rate to trigger a nine cent VATRE, the three remaining golden pennies and the six copper pennies, and this VATRE passes in November 2022, the resulting total tax rate would be more than six cents lower than where it is now, while also generating an additional $30 million in revenues for the district to use to cover increases in pay for staff and address the operating budget's deficit. So what does all of this mean to the taxpayers of our community? In an example using the average assessed value found in the school district, roughly $440,000, let's compare tax bills. In 2122, if this house was the owner's principal residence and they qualified for a homestead exemption, this $440,000 was reduced by $25,000 to $415,000. Applied to the 2122 tax rate of 1.33700, this equates to a tax bill of $5,548.55, or $462.38 split up over 12 months. Looking ahead to 2223, let's start with a scenario where the assessed value remains flat. The house with the assessed value of $440,000 and a homestead exemption is now reduced by $40,000 to $400,000 as a result of the Texas constitutional amendment passed in May 2022, 
which increased the homestead exemption from $25,000 to $40,000. With no VATRE, the projected 22-23 tax rate would drop to 1.31960, accounting for the required compression on the MNO side and no adjustment to the INS rate. This would equate to a tax bill of $5,278.40, or $439.87 split up over 12 months. With a VATRE, the projected 22-23 tax rate would drop to 1.27460, this would equate to a tax bill of $5,098.40, or $424.87 split up over 12 months. So compared to 21-22, the Scenario 1 tax bill with no VATRE would be a reduction of $270.15 over the year, or $22.51 per month. With a VATRE, the tax bill would reduce by $450.15 over the year, or $37.51 per month. This scenario represents an example where the yearly tax bill drops, isolating the impact of the decreased tax rate because the property value remained the same. In the more realistic scenario two, let's assume the assessed value for this house rises the maximum amount, no more than 10% year over year. This brings it up to $484,000 and then is reduced by $40,000 to $444,000 as a result of the homestead exemption. With no VATRE, the projected 22-23 tax rate would be the same reduced rate from Scenario 1 of 1.31960. This would equate to a tax bill of $5,859.02 or $488.25 split up over 12 months. With a VATRE, the projected 22-23 tax rate would be the same reduced rate from Scenario 1 of 1.27460. This would equate to a tax bill of $5,659.22, or $471.60 split up over 12 months. Comparing these tax bills to 21-22, the Scenario 2 tax bill with no VATRE would be an increase of $310.47 over the year or $25.87 per month. With the VATRE, the tax bill would increase by $110.67 over the year, or $9.22 per month. This scenario represents an example where the rise in property value causes the yearly tax bill to be more compared to the previous year, even with a reduction of the tax rate, which is set by the school district. For more information about school finance, the district's operating budget, and upcoming elections, visit www.leanderisd.org slash smartmoney.